I don't know why, but I'm feeling this yellow background today. But what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores coming with a quick Redskins report. Some big hopes, some huge news. It's got me excited over here at 11.20 p.m. Let's get it. Uh, so it's been reported that Reuben Foster has been sprinting and putting weight on his leg, which is huge news. His nerves are finally coming back. Remember back in 2019, as soon as we finally about to see what he could do, he tore his ACL, MCL, and ACL. It sounded like the whole leg was gone, but he's steady and proven. So for everybody that's been wanting Reuben Foster news and updates, here we go. He actually is regaining feeling and nerves in his leg. He's getting it stronger. He's able to sprint. That is amazing. I mean, it was there were questions whether or not he would even be able to walk again type thing. Like I said, ACL, MCL, and LCL. I mean, all of them. All the CLs, torn. I don't even know how his leg was still together. But now we're getting positive news from the Reuben Foster camp, and many believe that he may be back by training camp. I mean, literally just yesterday, I thought Reuben Foster may not even make it back for the regular season, but now, reportedly, but now it's reported that he may even be back for training camp. If we have one, you know, with all the coronavirus stuff going on. As long as everything is on schedule, it seems like Reuben Foster should be back for the Redskins by like June or July, which is crazy. Because like I said, I was starting to think he may not even play at all in the 2020 season. So this is a huge surprise. This is great news. Nothing is for certain. Of course, the Redskins don't know everything they need to know. It's hard to even put a timetable on something like this. Because like I said, he's regaining nerves. There's no doctor in the world. World that can exactly tell you how long it's going to take for him to regain nerves to the point that he could play NFL football. It's different, you know, just for walking. It's easier to kind of put a, a due date on when you'll be able to walk again like a normal human for a doctor, but like NFL shape ready to take helmets at full speed to your knee again. That's really hard to gauge no matter what profession you're in. Doctor, medical science, exercise science, anything, physical therapy, but the Redskins did hire an entirely new training staff. Ryan Vermillion is now the head. And also Kevin Wilkes. Dan Snyder just made up a position for him. Like he literally has a job title that was not he that was not here previously before he was hired here. Like Dan Snyder literally just made up a job title. He's like a medical consultant type guy. And I know a lot of us don't know about him on this side of football, but like on the actual playing in football and the doctor size, exercise science, physical therapy, he's like the Michael Jordan of the doctor world. So Kevin Wilkes is low key one of the best moves Dan Snyder has made all off season. It's just not really talked about because until he performs some miracle to bring back a player from getting hurt or once we have an entire season where we have less players getting hurt, we won't be able to truly see what type of impact he has. But from his history and recommendations and reviews and all of that type of stuff, Kevin Wilkes is that dude in the medical field. So with him on our side, new training staff, Ryan Vermillion coming from the Panthers, who was also awarded training staff of the year a few years ago. If anybody can get Reuben Foster back fully healthy, ready to go by training camp, it's this one. But like I said, I don't want to promise anything. I don't want to get y'all too excited because even the Redskins and the best doctors in the world don't know exactly when Reuben Foster will come back as of today. But this is very positive news because like I said, this almost seemed hopeless, at least 2020 season wise. But now it seems like he'll even be able to come back a couple of months before the 2020 season. And Redskins, please. Please don't rush them. Y'all went and got this deep linebacker group with Sean Deion Hamilton, Cole Holcomb, Ryan Anderson, Thomas Davis, Kevin Pierre-Lewis, Josh Harvey Clemens, John Bostic. There's no reason to rush Ruben Foster back. When healthy, he's better than all of those guys, of course, especially since he's young. I mean, Thomas Davis at his best may have a say in it, but nobody out of that group has the type of athleticism and explosiveness that Reuben Foster has. Reuben Foster definitely has the most potential out of any of that linebacker group, even if he took Thomas Davis to a time machine and took him back to being 26 years old. Like, Reuben Foster is a complete game changer on defense if we can get him back healthy. And if everybody's healthy, my ideal starting three linebackers would be Reuben Foster, Sean Deion Hamilton, and either Ryan Anderson or Thomas Davis at Sam. 
Because I know week one is going to be hard for anybody to beat out Thomas Davis at the linebacker spot. Just off of the fact that he already knows Ron Rivera's system and everything. He knows how he wants things done. He's the veteran guy. So he may have lost a slight step just because he's older than all of the young guys. But as far as week one goes, I wouldn't be surprised if Thomas Davis is starting somewhere in that linebacker group. I mean, actually, I would be surprised if he isn't, really. Just off of his veteran leadership, IQ, knowing where to be, when to be there. He'll be able to help the other guys out on the field and in practice. Thomas Davis is a great signing, even just as an on-field coach, even if he isn't that great on the field playing for us. Ruben Foster under Thomas Davis's wing is going to be crazy. And y'all already know, if y'all have seen a lot of my videos when I'm discussing the defense, especially the 4-3 one, my favorite linebackers of this linebacker group are definitely Sean Deion Hamilton for his IQ, and he was one of the best coverage linebackers last year in the league, and then Ruben Foster, of course. And then it's just figuring out who's gonna be that third one. I like Ryan Anderson a lot, but like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if Thomas Davis is the one starting somewhere in that linebacker group. And also, don't sleep on Cole Holcomb. Ron Rivera already praised him a few weeks ago, and he's a great run stopper, but he's just a big liability in coverage. So if he can improve his coverage mightily, then he can play a big role in that linebacker group. And also, don't forget Kevin Pierre-Lewis, because he has a lot of potential. He just hasn't really been given the snaps to show it. But those last few games for the Chicago Bears, he actually started to look like something something, for real, for real. His coverage skills and instincts were pretty good. And he was solid in run stopping, so he might even be a sleeper. And you cannot forget Josh Harvey Clemens, because he was our best coverage linebacker, period. He was more of like a hybrid safety a few years ago. And then before the 2019 season, he added a whole bunch of weight, like literally like 50 pounds of muscle, so that he can compete to be an all-down linebacker and be able to contribute in run stopping. And then he got hurt, so we never got to actually see what he could do. So it's going to be interesting to see what he looks like this coming training camp. And then you just add Ruben Foster into the mix. Come on now. I don't think a lot of people remember how great Ruben Foster was. I mean, coming out of Alabama, he was literally like a top five, at the very minimum, top 10 talent. It was just off the field concerns and injury risk all compiled together that made him slide all the way down to the 31st pick when the 49ers took him. And then, I mean, coming out of college, there were debates whether or not Reuben Foster, Jalen Smith, or Miles Jack were the best linebackers coming out of college in at least the past 10 years type of thing. Like he's that talented. His potential is crazy. And then his rookie season for the 49ers, he was playing very well. I mean, Pro Football Focus graded him the second best rookie out of that rookie class that season. And he was injured some games. He didn't even get to play the entire season. The only rookie they rated above him was Tredavious White. And only by a little bit, Ruben Foster was graded a 90.7. Tredavious White was graded a 91.6. Alvin Kamara was a 90.6, which was 0.1 less overall than Ruben Foster. And y'all remember how great of a season Alvin Kamara had his rookie season. I mean, through the first 16 weeks of the 2017 season, the only linebackers pro football focus thought were better than Ruben Foster in the entire league were Luke Keekley, Levante David, and Bobby Wagner. Those are the only three linebackers in the entire football league that they had graded above Reuben Foster. And this was Reuben Foster's rookie season. Between him being a rookie and being injured on and off, he never even had a full grasp of the defense or the NFL speed or none of that. He was just going off a of straight raw potential. So with Ron Rivera, ex-linebacker the NFL, great head coach, great defensive mind, great linebacker mentor. I mean, getting legendary seasons out of Thomas Davis and Luke Keekley. I can't even fathom what Ron Rivera can get out of Reuben Foster if he's able to stay healthy and out of trouble. Because the way we ended up getting him was all of the domestic violence accusations and drama that he had with his ex-girlfriend and everything while he was with the 49ers. And they just ended up releasing him. We got him off waivers. And no other team even tried to claim him off waivers. We were the only one to put in a claim. So, of course, we ended up getting him. We were ready to show him off. Add him to our defense that had high expectations, even with Greg Minuski still as a defensive coordinator. But then he got hurt in first day of OTAs. It was only his third day in a Redskins uniform. And seeing him getting carted off was just so sad. I, we all had such high hopes for him. But now it looks like he's making a real comeback. And there's actually very positive progress. Like I said, it seemed like he might not even be able to walk normal again. And now he's full sprinting. 
running on treadmills, all of that. In January, it was reported that he just started getting feeling back in his toes. And now as of late March, he's sprinting. So going from not even having feeling in your toes in December to being able to sprint by late March is huge progress in a relatively short amount of time. So going from late March to early June, we're gonna have to see how much progress he makes then. And like I said, we can't depend on him. I like the route that Ron Rivera went in free agency as far as linebackers go. Getting a bunch of guys to make them compete against each other. Some young high potential guys. Then Thomas Davis, veteran leadership proven guy, but he's up there in age, 37 years old to be exact. So you can't expect too much out of him. But he was expected to take a large step in regression last season with the Chargers, but he still went out there and balled out. He didn't look like the Thomas Davis of the Panthers when he was going to the Pro Bowl, but he still looked really good for the Chargers last year. And hopefully he looks like that for us. But I love how deep this linebacker group is and adding Ruben Foster to it is just going to be insane. Like somebody's not making it out of training camp and that's just crazy. And thank goodness all the hate has died down. Everybody was on our neck for picking up Ruben Foster. Even though there was no real evidence on whether or not he was actually committing domestic violence or whatever was going on. And we still caught all the slander from everybody. I mean, people on ESPN, people on social media, Bleach Report, I mean, anywhere you look. People were either mad at the Redskins or they were doing that, well, it's the Redskins, so we're not surprised type of thing. But when Ruben Foster goes out there and ball out, we will have us a steal, especially since he's only a $1,697,088 cap hit for the 2020 season. If he goes out there and balls out, then we'll have to pay that man quite a bit of money to re-sign him and all of that. But as of right now, as far as 2020 goes, if we can get a healthy, all-pro Reuben Foster for less than $2 million worth of cap hit, that is insane. But I'm not even worried about the money. I just hope he goes out there and stays healthy and has an all-pro season. And to prove to himself that he can still do it. Because confidence is big. And being able to show yourself that you still got it and not having to worry about getting hurt. You can play without being timid. That's a big step for Ruben Foster's career. So I really hope he bounces back in the best way. And even if we have to pay him a lot of money next season to re-sign him, right now we're estimated to have top three cap space going into the 2021 offseason. So I'm not even worried about having to pay him. I just want him to go ball out. I don't even care about the money. I just want to see him be great. But that's it for this Redskins video. I appreciate the view. Please like the video if you learned anything. If you liked it, please subscribe if you haven't. Infinite content coming out. I'll catch y'all later. I'm out.